Nausicaa, National Sea Centre in Boulogne-sur-Mer. It's the biggest aquarium in France. Sharks, caimans, tropical fish, sea lions. With its 35,000 sea creatures, it attracts 600,000 visitors per year. And today, Nausicaa is writing a new page in its history. This has never been done before in Europe. To become one of the largest aquariums in Europe, a crazy challenge. It was a challenge, and people love challenges. The teams on the construction site must build a giant tank with a capacity of 2.6 million gallons of water, the equivalent of four Olympic-sized swimming pools, because it's the size of the tank which determines the class of aquarium in the world ranking. We were keen to see what the end result would be. Wow, what a sight. For this, they must create the biggest bay window in Europe. And it had to work at the first attempt. The tension was palpable. And to keep the giant tanks running properly, the teams will need to develop a unique water filtration system, which will be a world first. The aquarists at Nausicaa will welcome more than 22,000 additional animals, including the future stars of the tank, the hammerhead sharks. You can never be 100% sure of everything. It's impossible. The engineers must design the windows so they're capable of withstanding more than 500 tons of pressure. Each stage of the construction is a technical feat. The building and aquarium teams only have two years. And not everything will go to plan. It's been a nightmare. Welcome to the biggest aquarium in Europe, a site of challenges. This is Boulogne-sur-Mer in the Hauts-de-France. Here is a construction site. Nausicaa's ambition is to become the biggest aquarium in Europe, and to do so, it must double in size. The job is massive, and the teams have an additional constraint. To keep the costs down, the work must be completed in less than two years. More than 100 companies are hard at work. They have to clear away 50,000 tonnes of rubble, the equivalent of the weight of five Eiffel Towers, lay 459,000 cubic feet of concrete, and dig a pit the equivalent of four Olympic-sized swimming pools to create the biggest tank in Europe. They intend to welcome species from the oceans all in record time. For Nausicaa, the stakes are high. It needs to hold its position in the global competition, a real race for gigantism in which they are up against the most prestigious aquariums in the world. We're in the process of doubling the size of Nausicaa. Institutions like ours are more or less doomed, if I can say that, to introduce big new attractions every five or ten years in order to develop. Thanks to this extraordinary extension, Nausicaa will become a centre that can't be ignored in the study and preservation of marine life. It will house twice as many sea creatures as now, including a number of endangered species. The Nausicaa teams hope this will attract more than a million visitors per year to make them aware of the fragility of the oceans. It's only if we manage to attract visitors and transport them to another place that they are going to be interested in what they see. With such ambition, it needed an architectural project of the highest standard. The plans of the building were entrusted to Jacques Rougery. This former collaborator of Commander Cousteau is the designer of the Sea Orbiter Project, a futuristic maritime station dedicated to ocean study. For Nausicaa, the architect designed a totally innovative building. The viewers can see different images depending on where they're standing. Each image conjures up the marine world. This imitation of nature is what we call biomimicry. These architectural creations reproduce forms which exist in the natural world. 
So we see shells, like seashells, without being a seashell. But it could be a stingray with big wings. We don't know, but it's the sea. That's what Leonardo da Vinci did. Biomimicry, understanding the genius of nature, how it adapts. The entire architectural project is a real technical challenge, starting with the large tank. It's at the heart of the work, because it's the size of the tank which determines the classification of the aquarium in the world ranking. To become the biggest in Europe, Nausicaa's tank will have a capacity of 2.6 million gallons of water. A tank of 2.6 million gallons of water is colossal. It's never been done before in Europe. 200 feet long, 115 feet wide, and 26 feet deep. The tank is designed so that the visitors always have the impression of being underwater. The journey starts on a balcony, where they have the unsettling sensation of being plunged into the deep sea amongst the sharks. Enough to give you vertigo. Then they go through an underwater tunnel 60 feet long, surrounded by 10,000 corals. To arrive at a bay window of more than 1,000 square feet. The biggest in Europe. It gives a view of the reconstruction of the Malpelo Marine Sanctuary in Colombia. The highlight of the show. Classed a World Heritage Site by UNESCO, Malpelo houses hundreds of different species, a paradise for scientists. Mirroring the island, the objective for the future large tank is to become a place of preservation for endangered sea creatures. It's not only showing a large tank which is a piece of the sea, we're showing a tank which is in effect as though it had been dug up from the slope of Malpelo. It will host a number of shoals of fish, batfish, tropical fish, stingrays and especially hammerhead sharks, an endangered species. But recreating the seabed of this marine sanctuary is an enormous challenge for the construction teams, especially with a short deadline. There won't be two tanks or aquariums like this in the world. It's really something special. You can never be 100% sure. It's impossible. You have to accept the unknown. To achieve this feat, the construction teams had to draft a model of the tank in 3D. In this building, there isn't a straight wall and there isn't a straight floor. The only way to achieve our goals and to get to grips with the building and its volumes was to make it in 3D. To create a tank identical to the ocean bed, an entirely digital model has to be created. Every detail of the final building is reproduced to the nearest millimetre. From the foundations to the roof, from the seawater supply to the electrical system, everything is listed. Using this tool was a big help with such a complex geometrical project where we had to work to the millimeter. It's a vital time saver. The teams now have less than 18 months to deliver the aquarium. Whilst waiting for the large tank to be built, in the old Norsica buildings, the aquarium and marine zoology specialists are already laying out the new site. Nausicaa is the largest European centre of coral reproduction. It supplies the most important aquariums in the world, an essential role, as if nothing is done, they will have disappeared by 2050. The aquarists take cuttings, in other words, breed more than 70 different species of coral. However, these are not plants that Ludwig is handling, but animals. Basically, the minuscule animals are these little dots that we can see, the little brown dots. These little animals randomly develop. Their structures date back more than several million years, like, for example, the Great Barrier Reef in Australia. The technique of propagation by cuttings is very simple. We're just going to cut a few centimeters of this little branch with secateurs. 
Once put back in the same conditions, it will continue to develop the way it was before. After a few months, the little bit I've cut will reach this size. But if the technique is simple, it is also delicate. Coral is an extremely fragile animal. The slightest disturbance in its environment can kill it. And Ludwig and his team are in a race against the clock. They have one year to breed 10,000 corals, which they'll install on the large tank's walls. There are many of us working on it. It's an intense and relatively important challenge for us. But we'll carry it out. At the same time on the construction site, the teams enter a delicate phase. The large tank's concrete structure has been built. While some of the men lay the epoxy resin, made of a base and a hardener which makes the surface totally waterproof, the other workers are clearing the space to accommodate the biggest bay window in Europe. A 54-ton monster, 69 feet long, 20 feet wide, and 15 inches thick. This monster will have to withstand the pressure of 500 tons exerted by the water of the large tank against the wall. And here's the catch. A bay window of such dimensions is a world first. Only three companies worldwide are capable of such a feat, one of which is in Europe, in Italy. Les Italiens ont été fabuleux. The Italians have been fantastic. Let me tell you, at the beginning, they were saying, he's a bit crazy, this architect, with his 353,000 cubic feet tank window. They were tearing their hair out. But it was a challenge, and people love challenges. To create such a colossus, it's impossible to use glass. You need a special composite, methacrylate. In other words, plexiglass. More flexible and resistant than glass, methacrylate is the only technical solution to make the windows for Nausicaa's large tank, where not a single wall is straight. The interesting thing with methacrylate is that it's much lighter than glass. It has the ability to warp without breaking. And obviously it offers transparency without distorting the geometry nor the colors that we observe. Above all, methacrylate will be essential considering the presence of the numerous sharks in the large tank. Shark skin is peculiar. It's not made of scales, but of teeth, minute teeth. Simply by approaching the visitor and passing against the window, the shark can cause small scratches. It would be nearly impossible to get rid of these scratches on glass. But methacrylate is easily sanded, even underwater, and can get its initial transparency back. In case of damage caused by wear, a scratch, or something else, we can sand this material until a perfect transparency has returned. Italy, in the suburbs of Rome. It's a big day for the management of Nausicaa. They're coming to inspect the windows of the future sea center. To keep to schedule, the Italian company has worked seven days a week for one year on the design of the large bay window and all the other windows of the aquarium. For the Nausicaa management, the quality of the windows is paramount. If they have too many faults, it's the same as this. Will that disappear? The vision of the spectator will be distorted, a disaster for those observing the sea life. So today, the center's aquarists check each centimeter of the window surface, tracking down any irregularity. There's a little white bit here. It'll take two full days to check the huge bay window and the other windows of the aquarium. 
If you look at the window here, you can see a little irregularity. You can see it from the outside, so you wonder if it could be perceptible to a visitor. I'm not too worried, as after a good sanding, it should be invisible to the eyes of the visitors. They should get that feeling of immersion that this large glass should be giving. But how did the Italian engineers manage to design the biggest European bay window? In reality, the bay is made of seven giant panels which have been put together in a hermetically sealed hangar. To hold together, the panels have been laid next to each other with some gelled methacrylate in between each partition, then heated at 140 degrees Fahrenheit for several weeks. The exact time of exposure is a professional secret. In spite of the technical complexity in designing these windows, the supplier has managed to make them within a margin of one millimeter of the measurements. So indeed, the end result is extremely positive for the team. Vis-a-vis -vis the head. The quality of the windows is perfect. But one of the biggest challenges is still to come. Transportation of the giant bay window from Italy to the Boulogne-sur-Mer site. The Nausicaa teams have two options, by road or by sea. That was a real adventure. We thought about bringing it over by boat. That's not a bad idea, but can be hazardous. So we decided that by road would be less risky. Big mistake. Europe's biggest bay window has just left Rome and it's on its way to Boulogne-sur-Mer, where it will be installed in Nausicaa's aquarium. It's the middle of winter, and obstacles quickly pile up. Some days it was covering 50 miles, and that was some kind of record. Other days it was stranded, the truck was blocked by the police. Instead of taking 10 days, it took a month because it was caught in snow. The truck was stranded, it's been a nightmare. It's a cold day under a glorious sun and the precious cargo arrives on the site after a 1,400 mile trip. It's an emotional moment because that was a long wait and it's very symbolic. Relieved by the news, all the teams on the construction site stop working to welcome it. But the respite is short-lived. In a few moments, an extremely delicate operation is about to begin, moving the huge bay window by crane. Everyone's stressed because obviously this is an important event that can't fail. It involves a very special crane that needs extreme precision. It's the most complicated phase since the start of the work. The 54-ton monoblock has to be installed in its definitive place. And for the largest bay window in Europe, the crew have had to call for the largest mobile crane on the continent. There are just two of these machines in the European Union. They are the only ones capable of lifting such a weight. The crane operator has no room for error. The crane started up and lifted the window. Clearly, the tension was palpable. At this moment, anything can happen. The biggest mobile crane in Europe is at maximum capacity for lifting. A discrepancy in trajectory, even minimal, and it will be a disaster for the whole site. Everyone holds their breath. We didn't have the option of making any mistakes. It had to work, and at the first attempt. The arrival of this big window above this large tank, it's slow descent. Everybody knows exactly what has to be done. Everything has been calculated. Everything has been thought through in relation to the angles of attack. When we make concrete, the unit that's usually worked to is the centimeter. Here we really had to work to the millimeter. The operation is going to take more than 10 hours. 
10 hours of worrying for all the construction team. Then the huge bay window is finally installed in the large tank. It's a success. It's the first time we've built something like this in Europe. It's exciting and it makes us very proud. At the end of this day, which has been extremely tense and nervous for everyone involved in the project, we all breathed a big sigh of relief. When we place the window, there it is, we have a space ready to receive the water, and that is an important stage. Frankly, we were champing at the bit, and we were eager to see what that would bring. It's also a hell of an adventure that we'll never forget. But due to the problems transporting the bay window, the entire work is considerably delayed. The inauguration will take place in 10 months' time. So that everything is ready in time, it has been necessary to plan certain events years in advance. This is a secure hangar, and its location is kept secret. It's here, out of sight, that scientists at Nausicaa are breeding several rare species. Amongst them, the future star of the aquarium, one of the most enigmatic fish. Oh, look, he's coming. The hammerhead shark. He's really grown. Yes, he's beautiful. He swims really well. Do you remember when we first had him, his size? Yes, he was so small. If there was one animal which it was necessary to target, it was the hammerhead shark, who will be one of the flagship animals of the extension. 80% of the aquarium's future animals are born in captivity. But for the hammerhead shark, reproduction is more complicated. The star of the aquarium had to be captured in the open sea in 2011. He was captured when he was very small, under strict rules in Australia. They told us that during that period, and at that time, the population was large enough for us to capture him, so we had authorization. Before the plans for the future aquarium had been drawn up, Nausicaa's teams were already breeding the hammerhead shark. Seven years of anticipation and daily attention. An animal like that deserves the best. Seven years isn't too long to really look after an animal and to make sure it grows well. Of course, it's a challenge, it's a gamble, but everyone is behind that. The growth of the sharks is a lot slower than that of other fish, barely six inches per year. Contrary to its reputation as a predator, it's an animal who eats little and has trouble digesting its food. Now it's a period of observation for the animals. So here we are feeding the hammerhead shark, and we're going to check if he comes to take his food, as is the case here. That allows us to see the state of health of the animal close up and to control the amount of food he's eating. Meanwhile, in Boulogne-sur-Mer, eight months before the end of the work, the aquarium is taking shape. The framework is in place, the roof is nearly finished, the craftsmen are hard at work placing the big glass panels which will decorate the facade. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. The most surprising part of the site is invisible. It's the supply of seawater to the future aquarium. It needs 2.6 million gallons to fill up the gigantic tank at Nausicaa. It's not been built on chance. All the exhibited fish come from the open sea. The water, therefore, is going to be drawn 1,000 feet from the center, directly from the channel. For that, the engineers have conceived an extremely sophisticated pump system concealed under the beach at Boulogne. Buried 16 feet deep, four 820 feet long pipes pump water directly from the sea to the center. In all, 
It was necessary to create an underground network of 10 miles of pipes to fill the largest tank in Europe. Frédéric Cousin is responsible for the water at Nausicaa. It's here that everything starts. It's with this pipe that was installed last year that raw water arrives directly from the channel. This water is captured by these pumps that are right here and is driven by this extremely sophisticated panel that adapts to the tidal coefficient. This seemingly ordinary panel is the real brain of the aquarium. This gem of a computer adapts the flow of the water pump to the rhythm of the tides. The more the tide rises, the more the system collects a maximum of seawater, which is swallowed up by the huge network of underground pipes. The filling of the large tank is going to start in a few hours. For now, the bay window is surrounded by a silicon seal and is held in place by a metal frame. Once the tank is filled, the pressure of the water, 500 tons strong, is going to push the huge bay window into the wall. This is how the water resistance of the big tank will be guaranteed. Then the divers will retrieve these metallic wedges, the assembly joints, which until now have been supporting the 54-ton bay window. Despite its size, the bay window alone cannot take the pressure. To relieve it, the observation room's ceiling is exceptionally thick. The engineers have designed a concrete slab more than three feet thick. It can support the weight of at least three army tanks. It is this thick simply because it takes the buoyancy exerted by the water on the big bay window. Here we're obviously talking several dozen tons of buoyancy, which are transmitted through the floor, which in fact works as a flat girder. Joël Taquet, the commercial manager, attends the last checks himself before filling the tank. No metallic object must be forgotten on the site, or the biological balance of the tank will be threatened. A considerable risk for the aquarium animals. I'm looking for the last pieces of metal which could be in the tank. It's like when you go to the theatre or into other public buildings. It's exactly the same thing. Have you found anything so far? A little bit, yes. I found a blade from a cutter. The checks are going to last long into the night. In the event of an error, there'll be no going back. The tank filling is programmed for dawn the following day. It's D-Day. There we go. We're underway. It's at this level. François Gosselin, the hydraulic engineer of the crew, and Frédéric Cousin, the head of water quality, have just launched the much-awaited phase, filling the tank with water. What are we starting with, around one foot per day? I haven't done the calculations. Surprisingly, the 2.6 million gallons of water necessary to fill the large tank are going to pour out of this little pipe. And for a good reason. The filling up only takes place once in the life of the aquarium. So to reduce the costs, the team use an existing pipe. This little pipe is planned to replace the 3% of water which will evaporate every day from the large tank due to the effect of the heat of the place. The filling of the tank marks the end of the structural side of this monumental work. It's really the starting point of the operation. It represents an enormous investment on the part of a lot of people. It's symbolic to see the water pouring into the large tank, and yes, it's emotional. The tank is coming alive. Until today, we were doing construction work, and it's from today that this work really transforms into an aquarium.
Every day, the tank fills up with 12 inches of water. After two weeks, it's only just reached six feet. The filling up will take six entire weeks. Then one morning, a formidable 2.6 million gallons of seawater. Here is the largest tank in Europe. It could contain four Olympic-sized swimming pools. It's just six months away from opening. The teams are getting on with catching up on lost time caused by the bay window. The electricians have entered the fray. They're installing 40 floodlights, which are going to light up the marine show. We're going to put it just there, Felix. Just there. Yeah, there. But there remains one decisive stage. Right, it's detached. Checking the quality of the water and that it's well oxygenated. The slightest error could put the sea creatures in danger. The biggest aquarium in Europe needs a unique filtration system. The engineers have designed a true prototype. A world first. We are in the basement of the aquarium. This deafening noise comes from what is the lung of the large tank. It's made of 12 enormous filters weighing 50 tons each. Thanks to the power of this installation, all the water in the aquarium is fully cleaned in less than four hours in order to get rid of food remnants and fish detritus. A true technological feat. The installation is of exceptional size as it's on one of the largest existing installations in the world and the largest installation in Europe. So in these 12 filters, we find a total of 200 tons of sand, which will allow the water filtration. The reading says 4,800 cubic feet. Inside the filters, we find four different layers of sand. Each layer has a specific grain size to fix the different particles in suspension. It's this system which ensures the filtration. And to avoid all risks, the engineers have designed a reserve of water of 7,000 cubic feet, which allows the sea center to be autonomous for several weeks in case of oil spills or other ecological disasters. On the upper floor, Frédéric Cousin, the water quality manager, takes the first samples. The slightest physiochemical imbalance could cause thousands of animals to die. We're checking all the physics parameters, temperature and oxygen. Then we check the chemical parameters, ammoniac, nitrates, nitrites, phosphates. We check regularly the quantity of bacterial flora present in the tanks, simply to see if our filtration systems are working correctly. If the water parameters are not good, the whole filtration system has to be checked. All the chemical parameters which have been checked out are excellent, the physics parameters also. I think that we can be extremely confident for the next stage of the whole operation. The operation's a success. What do you have in your little box? <laughs> These are the big ones that I brought for you. Nausicaa's aquarists can finally place the first corals in the large tank. Their objective was to produce 10,000 in less than a year, a considerable challenge. 
even for Nausicaa, the first coral producer in Europe. It's a challenge that we overcame. At the beginning, we certainly had concerns, but through our know-how, our experience of all the techniques, we made it, so it's great. With the installation of the first corals, the aquarium reaches an important stage. Setting up the corals is, for us, the beginning of the installation process of the animals. This is the smallest one and not the most impressive of the tanks, but it will indicate to us if the tank is totally ready for the big animals. But before inserting the corals, the divers must prepare the tank's walls. Here, we're preparing the wall, meaning we're piercing the wall, and later on we'll be able to insert special little stems into the wall and allow the coral to spread very easily. Using drills, the divers introduce little plastic stems without phthalate into the tank's wall, a material chosen as it poses no danger to the animals. On that stem, they put a little concrete dome which will support the coral. That way, the animal will be able to settle and grow more easily. From inside the underwater tunnel, Ludwig controls the divers. In order to be able to grow, the coral must be laid in very special conditions. Here we have a specific species which doesn't need much light. If the little shoots do not grow, all the work done over several months will have been futile. What will be important to monitor over the next few days is that the little shoots we're putting in grow well. It will take a few days, but we'll soon find out. Divers will work for a few hours to install as many corals as possible. These first specimens will manage to acclimatize inside the tank. Ludwig is satisfied. But the race against time isn't over. We're only two months away from the official opening day. The corals have acclimatized to their new environment. Now it's the turn of the first fish to be brought in the large tank. And the biggest specimens are expected that very night at midnight. Inside this lorry is a real treasure for all present here. All marine fauna specialists. Oh, they have white spots near the lobes. Six young manta rays. All the way from Florida, they were taken from the Atlantic. We need a lot of people below to catch it, is that it? The team moved them from the tank they traveled in to the tank in which they'll start their new lives. We don't need to protect ourselves, they haven't got their sting. The operation is delicate. It has to be quick for the ray to stay as little time as possible inside the landing net. With the water inside the bag, their oxygen supply will only last a few minutes and the animals might get stressed. The teams run the 100 meters separating the truck from the tank. But not everything goes to plan. After over 30 hours traveling by plane and lorry, the rays are totally disorientated. They're banging into the wall. Stefan Enar, the aquarist in charge, is worried. Minutes pass. And finally... So that's it, there she goes. They swam in small volumes. They were big transportation tanks, but for these animals, that was a tiny volume. They turned in circles, and that made them use a lot of energy. Now they need to get some back. The teams feed them with baby bottles, a fish mixture, to recharge their energy. For the past two months in captivity, that's the way they've been fed. We'll take good care of them. For these rays and these SeaWorld fanatics, this is the start of a new adventure. 
But first, these manta rays will be quarantined before discovering the large tank. An essential step for the future cohabitation of the fish, because the order of introduction to the tank is essential. Otherwise, different species could eat each other. If you put the prey in afterwards, the rays will be there with an open mouth eating everything in sight. On the other hand, if you have the prey already in position, taking possession of the territory, and then you add the predator, the ray won't be boss for a while. Well, in any case, he's being fed, so he won't eat too many. The major ingredient for a good cohabitation between all these animals is to eat at the right time, at regular intervals, and in good quantities. To feed the centre's 60,000 marine animals, it'll take 40 tonnes of food a year. To each species, its own regime. And Nausicaa's teams have a distinctive technique to feed the big fish. Like with the four eagle rays already settled in the large tank. Marion proceeds to feed what is called the target. One way to feed is with training. The target is this cross sign. Then the rays are going to know this sign in the water and they're going to come. Below the target, we can see the treat, that's to say the food. Therefore, they associate the target with the food. When the ray sees the signal in the water, it's going to come and feed. Each species has a different sign. As soon as it's out of the water, the fish know that feeding has finished. This technique allows feeding at fixed hours. And to check that each species has eaten their portion. An essential procedure, considering the considerable number of fish that will populate the aquarium. The site team still have another challenge to overcome. They have to control the turbidity, the visibility of the inside of the tank, so they can make the water cloudier or clearer. The water needs to be sufficiently clear so the visitors can observe the 22,000 sea creatures. The visitors should not be able to see each other from one end of the aquarium to the other. Otherwise, they would lose the sensation of being underwater and the setup of the aquarium would be compromised. We're going to see the animals come out of nowhere, as you see them coming out of the blue in the oceans. What we've asked the engineers is that they don't have a visibility greater than 56 feet. They mustn't be able to see the wall on the other side, so it's a real challenge and very complicated to ask engineers not to do so good a job. Taking into account the dimensions of the large tank, the engineers have worked out that a visibility of more than 50 feet is needed to enjoy the aquarium without seeing the other visitors. Right now, the water in the tank is very clear. So to reach this goal, the technicians are going to make it cloudy by slowing down the aquarium's filters. Thanks to the speed variator, we're going to slow down the passage of water through the mechanical filters to slow down the filtration. Inevitably, by slowing down the filtration, the water will become slightly cloudy. The technicians are using this target under the water as a reference point, positioned at 56 feet from the bay window. We've placed this target, called a Secchi disc, exactly at 56 feet from the large window. As we can still make out this disc, that means that we have at least a 56 feet visibility. We need to keep this appearance of mystery. As you can see, when the animals are here, particularly the big ones like sharks, as soon as they come out from the shadows into the light, that will create an extremely impressive sight as you won't see them coming. You'll see them at the last moment, and yes, that will be part of the wonder and the discovery of the deep sea. And the rarest species will arrive in a few hours.
It's 5 p.m. It's now three weeks from opening. An articulated lorry has just arrived. That was a good one. And inside the lorry, the centre's future stars. Three-month-old baby hammerhead sharks. They've been taken from a lagoon in Australia with special authorization from the local government. They're so cute. It's great. Pleasing, isn't it? This is a species in real danger of extinction. Careful, they're really just youngsters, but with big heads. Ah, uh, yes, I see. An operation like this is only authorized every five years around the world. So for the occasion, there's lots of media here. The animals are transported in a special container. It guarantees the animals a 150% oxygen boost to keep them calm. Oxygen, 186. Temperature? 22, 25. Perfect. 48, 46. Just needs to come down three degrees. The aquarists constantly control the acidity level and the water temperature in which the sharks have been immersed. You see, here we're close to the ideal as there is just two degrees discrepancy. And for the rest of the parameters, the water that we have here is strictly identical to the native water of these animals. That's worked out well and we're very proud of that. With the help of this big yellow hose, the water in the container is going to be progressively replaced by that of the large tank, so that fish can acclimatize themselves to their new environment. But Nausicaa's team still have to ensure a delicate phase of the operation. If you could put that somewhere, we're going to take out the entire hose. The transportation of these animals from the container to the tank. Sharks do not have a skeleton, nor bones to protect their ribcage. The slightest shock during transportation, or even a simple mishandling, could seriously injure them. The handlers are going to collect the animals with a rubber mesh landing net, designed especially to distribute the strain evenly on the animal's body. The movements must be quick and precise. They take them to the quarantine tank, where the animals will be closely monitored for a few days. If their acclimatization goes according to plan, they will join the largest tank in Europe. The ideal would be to have babies, the first hammerhead shark babies, maybe one day. It will be another six years before the hammerhead sharks reach adulthood. But in a few weeks' time, the first visitors will be able to admire them. The construction work is over and the animals are now in place. The construction teams and the teams at Nausicaa have managed to pull off a mad gamble, transforming the biggest aquarium in France into the biggest in Europe. A veritable feat. The construction is finished one and a half months early. Thanks to their relentless work, Nausicaa has now 85 aquariums, which contain in total over 4.5 million gallons of water. The amount of sea creatures has doubled with the work. Nausicaa now houses 60,000 residents. Above all, it has entered the top five aquariums in the world. Its future in the international rankings is guaranteed for many years.